So, I mean, Living Single was sort of an interesting show because you had the Cosby show. That was a, a massive hit. But that was kind of more focused on the kids, mm -hmm. you know, high school, junior high, even elementary school. Uh, then you had a different world, mm -hmm. which focused on, you know, the college, the 19, 20, 21 year olds. But this was sort of like the next step where now you have sort of 20 somethings that are, you know, have jobs and are professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was almost like a transition into, into this show in terms of like the culture and the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, when you first heard about the show, and the show is actually written and produced by a black woman, uh, Yvette Lee Bowser. That's correct. Uh, you know, when you first started learning about the show after getting the gig, what did you think? It was a hard, it was a rough transition to learn how to function in Hollywood, how to function on a set, um, on a sitcom set. Uh, when we did uh, Key West, it was episodic. So it was, there were no jokes. There were, you know, it wasn't like that. It was real life, more real life. Living Single was a different, um, a different bird to tackle. But because I came from theater, the transition, I understood what it was. I just had to figure it out. You know, um, I didn't really know the show would be what it is, what, what it is for people and what it is for the culture. But I did understand that we had a chance to do something different. Okay. Now, the cast is very interesting. In terms of like the four the four female leads mm -hmm. on the show, you have Kim Fields, who had already done Facts of Life, which was like a big a big major sitcom already. Mm -hmm. She was one of the one of the main characters on there. Uh, you had Kim Coles, and was she fairly established at this point or not? Really? She was. Um, she came from In Living Color. Ah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, which was a big hit as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, your nemesis, uh, Eric Alexander. <laughs> Initially, your nemesis. You know, eventually you guys. That's my baby. <laughs> um, had she done stuff before? Uh, or oh yeah, she had been shows? on Cosby Show. Ah, right. Okay, there you go. And then you had Queen Latifah, mm -hmm. who, I mean, she had done some stuff. I think on Fresh Prince. Yes. But this was an actual lead role. Yes. It almost seemed like, I mean, would you say the show was kind of built around Queen Latifah a little bit? Was she sort of the main star in a way? Or it was really? built around Queen Latifah and Kim Coles. Kim Coles. Okay, there yeah. you go. They, were, they okay. were the two main characters that they built everybody else around. Uh, when you first started interacting with the cast and sort of seeing how, you know, the show was about, what did you think? <laughs> that this was going to be fun. <laughs> um they were all such interesting people, but we all understood that we had to be together in order to make this work. And so we fostered the friendship. We hung out with each other. We went to each other's houses, you know. Um, so the friendship you see on stage is, is real. We do like each other. And I think that happened immediately when we were in the room together after the first table read. Right. And they really, you know, took a chance, I think, on Queen Latifah, because right now everyone knows who she is, and I mm -hmm. think she had won an Oscar already and so forth. But back then, I mean, she was the rapper, essentially. She was the female rapper, and she had a little bit of stuff, you know, on, on Fresh Prince, but really, I mean, you didn't really see rappers becoming, well, I mean, I guess you saw it with, with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. So I guess that kind of set the stage. But you didn't see a lot of rappers sort of going into mainstream, you know, acting roles like you see today. Right. So I, I think that, the network kind of, you know, gambled on that and it, and it really worked out. I believe it did. <laughs> really did. Yeah. Now, with your character, sort of like a smooth kind of ladies' man kind of character, but from what I understand, they originally wrote you to kind of be a buffoon. Well, they wrote both men characters to be more like Lenny and Squiggy. Right. And um, we were, I forgot what episode we were taping, but they wanted us to do something and we kind of went you know, we can't do this like this. And we talked to them and got them to understand that you cannot have four strong black women with two buffoonish black men. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. 
you know, why would I be, a, why would I be crazy and a buffoon if I'm a stockbroker? That makes no sense to me. You know? Right. So, um, and to their credit, they tweaked it. They tweaked it. I think, I think they had a one idea of what the show was going to be, but then when they saw us together, when they saw how we interacted with each other, then things started to shift. Was the show a hit in the beginning or did it take a couple seasons for it to? to no, it was a hit up? in the beginning. When it first okay. came out. That's why they cloned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get to all that. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Don't look at me in that tone of voice, David. My publicist is here and he's looking at me like... Okay, so so you're one of the main characters on the show uh, throughout. You know, at one point you actually even got two NAACP Image Awards. Or nominations, I guess? Mm -hmm. Nominations, yes for an outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. But then at one point, there started to be some friction uh, between you and, I guess, the writers? Well, it, was, it wasn't it was just me. And see, people are trying to make it seem like I had problems with them. No, the cast had issues. And when we would have issues, I wound up being the spokesperson for those things. So we'd have meetings, and I would be the one to speak. Um, and there were things that, you know, we were the B team. We were, the, we were on the B lot. You know, so there were things that were um, less than, you know, and we fought for that. We fought for our characters. We fought for writing for our characters. We fought for situations. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember uh, we interviewed John Amos, and uh, when he was working on Good Times, uh, he always fought for the characters on the show, mm -hmm. like... He wanted his son to go to college. He wanted his daughter, you know, on the show to be a judge, uh, you know, go to law school. But instead, <laughs> they would have JJ doing dynamite and wearing the chicken hat and, and so forth. And I remember he got to the point where he started actually threatening some of the writers. Oh, wow. So I wasn't the most diplomatic guy. So very often it would end in me saying, well, let's go outside then. <laughs> and, and the writers, they were, these were Hollywood writers. They weren't used to that. What do you mean we go outside? The black man Let's is go outside and talk us. about this. This is a scary black man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I never did that. I never did that. <laughs> and he ended up getting fired at one point. He ended up killing off his character mm. uh, after a couple of seasons. They just got tired of him threatening everybody. And, you know, <laughs> it was what it was. But... You would be the spokesman that would go speak to, I guess, whoever you needed to speak to about problems with the show and so forth. Um, and I guess right around the same time, on the same Warner Brothers lot, they started doing Friends. Well, that was like right after our first season. Yeah. Yeah. So here you are, season two of a hit show, and they have this other show that's very similar to your show, except everyone's white. Mm -hmm. And you saw like a difference between they were the way they were treated and the way the blooming single cast was treated. Bruh, <laughs> come on, man. Well, well, tell me the specific differences that you saw. Uh, friends worked on the big lot. So they got access to all the amenities that were on the big lot. At the end of it, they were making $100,000 an episode. Or no, a million dollars an episode, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, we didn't approach, at least I never approached any of those numbers. Um, they, had better, they had better services. They had better craft services. They had better cost, um, trailers. You know, but at the time, we didn't care. We were working on the show we were working on. And quite frankly, I was happy to have a gig. And I knew that we, what we were doing was important. So it didn't matter what they were doing. I saw it. But that's kind of what happens in, in Hollywood with, with what we do. We're always second tier. You know? And so it didn't, it was typical. It wasn't anything that was unusual to me. What I, what I didn't like is that I know that Yvette created this show. And I know that they, they took that and created another one. I don't think she got credit for that. Well, you said that as the show progressed, uh, you saw less uh, black writers and you guys started to have less input. Um, no, I never said that. Um, 
because there were always black writers on our show. What happened? We had um, Yvette left and we got two um, white producers okay. that were got over it. the writers. So the, the situations became more sitcom-y. Um, and nice guys, talented guys. It just, for me, when um, we take our stories and put them in the hands of somebody else, they become a little watered down. They are because the culture is not understood. So when you're in that situation, you hope that the other people on the other side of the table understand that you live this so they will listen to you and at least take it into consideration. And that's what they did. They, they would take it into consideration. Okay. Again, I, I don't, I don't want to um, make it seem like my time on Living Single was so tumultuous because it was not. We had moments that were not good, but my time on Living Single was a lot of fun. I got to work with people that I cared about that were funny as hell, and I got paid for that. I got paid to go to work and play. But what I did want was for the representation that we were giving to be more accurate, and that's what we fought for. Right, and the show had a lot of really dope uh, like guest characters. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, Heavy D would show up. Uh, Khalil Kane, who I've interviewed, uh, showed up. Uh, Ron O'Neill. Gladys Knight. Uh, Gladys Knight. Tatiana Ali. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Jai White showed up. He's, he's a regular CCH guest Pounder. on my show. CCH Pounder. Yep. Yep. Uh, Morris Chestnut. Uh, Arsenio Hall. Mark <laughs> yeah. Curry. Yeah. <laughs> Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Deion uh -huh. Sanders. This was almost, I mean, Q-Tip, Will Ferrell. <laughs> like, this almost seemed like, okay, everyone needs to at least have a, a few seconds of, of screen time. You know, all the, all the hot sort of celebrities felt like they, they needed a little, a little screen time on this show. And that was the great part about being there. You got a chance to meet some of everybody, you know, that yeah. wanted to be there. They wanted to be on this show. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and we're just getting into a very small list of people. I mean, <laughs> Evander Holyfield, Vivica Fox, yeah. Shaka Khan, who we just interviewed, uh, DJ Premier, T-Boz from TLC. Yeah, all three of them. All mm. three of them were there. 